morning. It is a pleasure to be able to share these moments with you, and I thank you for joining us as we begin a new day. I'd like to point out that you'll be seeing contact information on your screen in these few moments, and I would just love to hear from you in a variety of ways, with prayer requests you might have, with praises, or just a word of greeting, <clears throat> or perhaps even just to share what these moments mean to you that we take part in on a regular basis. Now, the first chapter of 2 Peter contains some very important qualities that are key for living the life of a follower of Christ. Verses 2 to 3, we see that His divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of Him who calls us by His own glory and excellence. We have been given uh, unlimited uh, an unlimited supply of spirit enabling to be and to do all that our Lord desires of us. And this all-inclusive resource allows us to accomplish far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us. Now, as we look down to verses 5 to 7, here we see the pathway to spiritual progress as we read, Now for this very reason also, applying all diligence in your faith supply moral excellence, and in your moral excellence, knowledge, and in your knowledge, self-control, and in your self-control, perseverance, and in your perseverance, godliness, and in your godliness, brotherly kindness, and in your brotherly kindness, love. Now, while all the necessary resources have been given to us, as we just read, that His divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness, we must put forth concentrated effort to incorporate these qualities into our life and into our lifestyle. So, deliberate discipline is needed. And we see that the, prog the process outlined here begins with faith in truth, and it is completed with serving and sacrificing love, agape love from the original Greek. So faith and love, we might say, bookend this very important process of spiritual growth. Now, it's very easy for us to look at these qualities outlined in these few verses as a very simple formula for spiritual maturity. We might say it looks like a simple eight-step plan. And the outline does indeed look simple enough, but what we see here is a lifetime prescription for growth. It is something that likely will not be fully realized in our lifetime. And that might be why the quality of perseverance is right in the very middle, meaning pressing on and ever progressing and never giving up. Verse 8 tells us that, uh, for if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they render you neither useless nor unfruitful in the true knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the goal is that we have a true knowledge of our Lord Jesus, and uh, this is the great motivation for us to progress and to grow in these areas. And a true knowledge of Jesus is not merely an intellectual achievement, but indeed it is something that develops as we grow in the qualities that are listed here. You know, it's been said that a checkup from the neck up is a good exercise in nearly every area of life, but it is especially so pertaining to these qualities we see here in 2 Peter 1. It would be a good exercise to very carefully look at each quality and to consider progress that's being made with each of these qualities. But I think probably an even more helpful exercise might be to meet with one or more other followers of Christ to together consider progress in each area and to help uh, one another to progress in these areas. Now, a sobering warning and a rich promise is to be found in 2 Peter 1, 9 to 11, where we read, For he who lacks these qualities is blind or short-sighted, having forgotten his purification from his former sins. Therefore, brethren, be all the more diligent to make certain about his calling and choosing you. For as long as you practice these things, you will never stumble. For in this way, the entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will be abundantly supplied to you. There are two options before us. We can digress or we can progress. 
to digress is to forget grace and mercy that's shown to us through Christ. To progress is to value this grace and mercy. The hope of entrance into the eternal kingdom is very powerful motivation for us. Now, none of us follow Christ perfectly, but the key is progress. And progressive steps are found in the eight important qualities that we've been looking at in 2 Peter chapter 1. We do well to let these serve as a roadmap for growth, not only today, but every day. Let's close our time this morning in prayer. Father God, we are thankful for what is outlined for us, these key eight steps that we see here in 2 Peter 1. We're glad that we have been given this roadmap, and so we seek to let it guide us. We let that be our guide today and indeed every day because we want to continually make progress. We want to really know our Lord Jesus Christ in the best way possible. And as we're told here, that we come to know him as we allow these Christ-like, God-like qualities progress in our lives. Guide us in that. And we know also that as we progress, as we are diligent to devote ourselves to these things, we have the hope that we will be granted abundant entrance into the eternal kingdom when Christ returns. And so we long for that day and we long for that kingdom and we long to be welcomed into it. And so these things indeed direct us to diligently seek to have these qualities incorporated into our life. We thank you, Father, for your divine power that's granted us everything that we need for life and godliness, that we are not lacking in any way in terms of the resources so, Father, you have called for us to simply appropriate these things into our life and lifestyle, and we want to do so. Give us wisdom, give us determination, perseverance, indeed, that we do these things. And, Father, that we might mutually encourage and support one another in this great plan of progress. Direct us that we might be close to one another in accountability and authenticity, that we could grow in these ways as you have designed for us to do so. Thank you, Father, for these moments we've shared together. I thank you, Father, for each individual who takes this time to share together. And we do have a very special partnership together because of this. And so, Father, thank you for allowing us this opportunity. May we be guided and encouraged in progress today. Thank you again for what we've considered and for these moments. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Once again, it's been a great privilege to share words of truth with you. Uh, words that can be so very practical in directing us in how we ought to go and to grow in our lives. I thank you for sharing these moments, and I look forward to having you share again in a future time. Until that time, may God watch over you, abundantly bless you. Until then, so long, and God bless.